Good afternoon, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hi. <clears throat> Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 5. Okay? Follow me along. Okay? Matthew chapter 5. We will be reading verses 43 on to verse 48 to close out the chapter in Matthew chapter 5. Okay? We read Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 on to verse 48 to close the chapter. <laughs> Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is God our Father, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Remember that. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, <clears throat> that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son, S-U-N, to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Hmm. Now, go to Luke chapter 6. <clears throat> Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, we will be reading verses 27 <clears throat> on to verse 36. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verses 27 on to verse 36. <clears throat> but I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. <clears throat> For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the capital H, highest. <clears throat> for he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the evil. 
Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Look at this in verse 35. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. And when you go back to Matthew chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 45, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Okay? Now, very quickly, let's note some things of what we just looked at. First of all, for our instruction in righteousness today, in this current dispensation, whoop, absolutely, instruction in righteousness is there. Absolutely. Absolutely. But brethren, let's keep something in mind when we look especially in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? Let's keep some things in our consideration. Number one, <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 5 and Luke chapter 6, had our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, had he gone to the cross and shed his blood on the cross to make the perfect atonement for our sins. Had that happened yet? No. No. Hence. Hence. This doctrinally was still under the law. Because the perfect sacrifice for sins, the blood of God shed on the cross, was not yet given. Aha! Very important thing to remember. Okay? Very important thing to remember. And also, specifically, when speaking of the Sermon on the Mount, okay? I have said this to you many times, and I'm going to keep saying it to you until it is permanently ingrained in your head. Okay? You will find faith mentioned one time in the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? And it is in a form of a rebuke, O ye of little faith. Okay? This, the Sermon on the Mount, is the constitution of the millennial kingdom, which our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, were offering unto the Jewish people first. Okay? It is unto the Jew first, and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. Okay? So doctrinally, this is the Old Testament. And the Sermon on the Mount... And what is similar in Luke chapter 6, okay, is pertaining doctrinally for the millennial kingdom. Okay? Our instruction in righteousness, brethren, sisters, church of the living God, absolutely. But we have to remember this. <clears throat> this is before the crucifixion. This is still under the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount is offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. Okay? To the Jew first. You have to remember that. Because if you do not, you're going to get into all kinds of problems. You see, brethren, you have to rightly divide the scriptures. Because if you don't, again, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Okay? Now, looking in Matthew chapter 5 again, where he says, But I say unto you, in verse 44, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. 
and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And verse 43, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, why was he saying this? But I say unto you, okay? God was manifest in the flesh. The word was made flesh, okay? God the Father himself was right there as king, offering the kingdom to the Jewish people. And guess what, cousin? During the millennial kingdom, it is not faith and works or anything like that. No, it's works. It's all works during the millennial kingdom. Why is that? Because God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to be in Jerusalem ruling and reigning for a thousand years. Okay? The king is going to be there. <clears throat> Go to Matthew chapter 21 now. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. <clears throat> We will be reading verses 33 on to verse 46 to close out that chapter, okay? Beg your pardon. Gotta have my coffee. Matthew chapter 21, we will be reading verses 33 on to verse 46, okay? Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press, uh, digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. Very quickly, is it not obvious unto whom our Lord Jesus Christ is referring to? Is it not obvious of what he is speaking about? Let's keep reading, okay? But when the husbandmen saw the son, and notice that's a lowercase s, they said among themselves, this is the heir. The heir to the throne of the son of David, you know. This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. He shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High. Huh? And they caught him and cast him out to the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Now, very quickly, the vineyard, you can liken unto Israel. Okay? Let it out to husbandmen, those who were to be the representative of this householder. Okay? And the fruits thereof. Pretty obvious. Okay? Now, let's read from verse 41 on to the close of the chapter. They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same as become the head of the corner? This is the capital L, Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God 
shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And right there, verse 43, is where these wicked uh, replacement theology people like to hinge this on, saying, well, it was the Jews, now it's to us Gentiles. Basically, these replacement theology heretics will go to here and say, oh, God is totally done with the uh, Jews. That's a lie. That is a lie. God is not done with the apple of his eye. Okay? In this video, I'm going to link the two videos on replacement theology that the Lord had me to do, uh, I think, about two years ago. Okay? Okay? God is not done with Israel. Okay? God is not done with Israel. We were grafted into their tree to make them jealous, to bring them back onto their Lord. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Beware of that, brethren. Let's continue. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Now check this out. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard this, his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Okay? Now, with that, go to Luke 19. Luke 19. Luke 19, we will read verses 11 unto verse 14 first, okay? Luke 19, verses 11 unto verse 14. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Okay? And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Oh. Oh. Now, go to verses 26 and 27 in Luke chapter 19. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, but those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Okay? What does this mean? During the Millennial Kingdom, again, brethren, God the Father is going to be at Jerusalem. Okay? Faith is not there in the Millennial Kingdom because you go to Jerusalem, there's going to be Jesus Christ, God our Father, on the throne. You don't need faith when you're going to be able to see God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the throne, ruling and reigning in Jerusalem during the Millennial Kingdom. You don't need faith. He's going to be right there. You're going to be able to see him. So, when he says in Matthew chapter 5, go back there, Matthew chapter 5, when he is saying this unto them, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and verse 44, okay? Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, the king was present right there, offering them the kingdom. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. 
and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Now hold on. Hold on. During the millennial kingdom, it's all works. During the millennial kingdom, remember, our Lord said that when it comes to forgiveness, during the millennial kingdom, okay, if you don't forgive someone their trespasses against you, you're not going to be forgiven. Okay? So hence, in the millennial kingdom, you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. Okay? Your forgiveness is equated to you forgiving someone else. Okay? While today, while today, it is not so. Okay? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? During the millennial kingdom, it is all works. So, so, let's read verse 46 on to the close of the chapter here in Matthew chapter 5 again. For if ye love them with love which love you, what reward have ye? Reward have ye. The rewards during the millennial kingdom, people. Hello? Okay. Do not even the publicans the same. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. During the millennial kingdom, Okay? During the millennial kingdom, again, it is all works. Someone during the millennial kingdom who is an enemy of our Lord, they are going to have to deal with God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of David, the King, personally. Okay? They are going to have to deal with the Lord personally. Because he's going to be in Jerusalem. See? Okay? So, during the t this time, the millennial kingdom, again, if you don't forgive someone, neither will you be forgiven. See? So, in, when he's talking about love your enemies, it's in the context that the king is going to be on the throne in Jerusalem. Whoever his enemies are during that time period, they're going to have to deal with the Lord Jesus Christ personally, in the flesh, on the throne, in Jerusalem. Okay? You have to keep that in mind. They're going to have bigger fish to fry than dealing with you in the millennial kingdom. See? The same principle adheres for us today. Yes. Yes, it does. But guess what? Brethren, guess what? This isn't the millennial kingdom. Okay? Do, do we get that? Do we get that? What? Look at verse 48 now. Okay? Look at verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And then when you go to Luke chapter 6, verse 36, Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Come on, fingers, work with me. Come on, fingers. Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Perfection and merciful. Okay? Remember, again, it's all works during the millennial kingdom. Now, to instruct us in righteousness today, amen. 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 For our instruction in righteousness. Doctrinally? No, 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 no. 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 Okay. Go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Okay. Paul and Epistles, doctrines specifically written for us today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? The Paul and Epistles. Okay? Remember, Acts is a book of transition. 
similar to Joshua. Okay, also similar unto Exodus. Okay, the children of Israel in the book of Exodus were being taken out of Egypt and going on to the promised land. Okay, which they eventually did in Joshua. Okay, they had some hiccups, if you will. Okay, but Acts is a book of transition. You have to remember that. But Romans chapter 12. Okay. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Don't be like the world to win the world. Okay? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, comma, will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. I, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. And every one members one of another. Okay, talking about the church of the living God. Okay, we have many members. Okay. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy. According to the portion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. What does abhor mean? Extreme Hatred. Abhor. Wherefore, therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. That's in the book of Job. You go find that. Okay? Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. So right here. Verse 9. Abhor that which is evil. We are to hate that which is evil. Let me give you an example. I hate abortion. Abortion is legalized murder. Okay? I hate Catholicism because it is the son of perdition's church. You know, Satan. Okay? I hate easy believism because it preaches another Jesus. Okay? We are to hate that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Now let's continue. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Now, thus far in Romans chapter 12, he is addressing who? The church of the living God. Our conduct for today in this dispensation. Okay? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, the blessed hope the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Very quickly about that. How instant are you in prayer? How instant are you in prayer? 
You know, for example, uh, something comes onto our mind or we see something, me and my wife, whenever we're out doing something or, or a brother or a sister sends an email and we, and we look at it, we'll, we'll stop what we're doing right then and there. Don't care who's looking and pray about it. Are you instant in prayer? <clears throat> Distributing to the necessity of the things given to hospitality. Distributing to the necessity of the things. You're saved, born again, you know, converted. You're a saint. Never mind that garbage that Catholicism says. That's a lie. That's of Satan. Okay? Given to hospitality. How would you deal with personally when your little bubble might have been burst or your little comfort zone by a beloved brother or a sister, depending on you, on who you are, were to suddenly come upon you unannounced? How would you handle that? How would you handle that? If a brother or a sister from out of nowhere just, hi, how would you deal with that? Hmm? Hmm? Would you adhere to the scriptures? Hmm? Give in to hospitality? You think about that, huh? Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Don't curse. Bless them which persecute you. Hold on. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Be of the same mind one toward another. How can you be of the same mind with someone who is not of the church of the living God? How can you do that? You tell me. You tell me. You put it in the comment section. Go ahead. How can you be of the same mind with someone who is not of the church of the living God? Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If Possible as much as lieth in you. Live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, and this one we all got to remember avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Sell the Lord. Aha! A clue. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good. Now, very quickly, brethren, and I challenge any of you out there, okay? Can you find me in the Pauline epistles where Paul tells us to love our enemies? In the Pauline epistles, okay? From Romans on to Philemon. Okay? Remember, the book of Hebrews is written on to the Jewish people for during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But from Romans on to Philemon. Okay? Find me where Paul says to love our enemies. Find it for me. Find it for me. 
put the verse down there for me, please. Okay? Okay? Now, let's look very quickly. Now, we're, we're coming back to Romans chapter 12. But now let's look at 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to be reading verses 11 on to verse 25. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 25. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Uh, Peter was the apostle unto the who? The circumcision. And Paul was the apostle unto the who? The Gentiles. Okay? Peter and Paul were saying the same thing. Okay? But remember, Paul was the apostle unto the Gentiles, while Peter was the apostle unto the Jews. Keep that in mind. Okay? Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. By your good works. Romans chapter 12, verse 20 and 21. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Go back to 1 Peter. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. As you all know, Paul echoes the same thing in Romans chapter 13, okay? <clears throat> For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Foolish men, those, what is a fool? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, okay? As free, and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if, when ye be buffeted for your fault, hi, <laughs> ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps, who did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. You know, corrupt communication, that kind of stuff. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. I know I, I know you are, but what am I? Da, 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 da. When he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Romans chapter 12. Verse 19 Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. <clears throat> Back to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. 
For ye were as sheep going astray, but now, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And also, looking at uh, Second, uh, First Peter chapter 3, verses 8 down to verse 12. Okay? First Peter chapter 3, verses 8 down to verse 12. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing. Knowing that ye are there, knowing that ye are therefore, uh, excuse me, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Look at verse 11. Let him eschew evil. What does eschew mean? To avoid it. Pass not by it. Okay? To avoid it. Okay? Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. What is evil? Anything that is against the scriptures, our standard. If it's contrary to this, it's evil. You understand? And that is not dependent on our feelings or on our interpretation. No, 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 no. It's the scriptures. Anything out there that is contrary to the scriptures is evil. Do you under you you understand that, right? Yeah? You 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 get that, right? Okay. Okay, we, we got that? Okay. <clears throat> Not and back in uh first Peter chapter three. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Okay? For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Okay? Back in Romans chapter 12. Okay? Verses 17 and 18. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide, uh, provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Okay? Are, are we getting these tie-ins? Yes? Yes? We're getting these tie-ins, right? Okay? Okay? <clears throat> Let him, back in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Hmm. Okay? Okay? Now look at verse 9 again in Romans chapter 12. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, or in chapter 3, verse 11, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Okay? Go to Romans chapter... Romans chapter... Uh, no. First go to Job. I beg your pardon. First go to Job. Job chapter 1. Okay? Job chapter 1. Come on. Okay. Job chapter 1, verses 6 and 8 in Job chapter 1. Or uh, verses 6 on verse 8 in Job chapter 1. Thank your pardon. Okay? Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, 
from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Now, pay attention to this. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, comma, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Fear God and escheweth evil. Depart from evil. Okay? And in Job chapter 2, verses 1 and verse 3, Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and escheweth evil. Perfection linked with fearing God and escheweth evil. Okay? Fearing God and removing yourself from evil. Avoiding evil. Okay? You, do you get it? Okay? And look at this. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Hmm. Hmm. Go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 25. Romans chapter 7, verse uh, 15 on to verse 25. What does Paul hate? What did Paul hate? Let's begin at verse 14, excuse me. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. He's talking about sin. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Because the law tells us what is sin. We wouldn't know what sin is unless our Lord had said, Thou shalt not. Okay? Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. What is this evil? For if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin. Sin that dwelleth in me. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. The inward man. Who is the inward man? The Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? But I see another law in but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me in captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. And O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. What did Paul hate? He hated sin. He hated that which was evil. Okay? So yes, church of the living God, you are to hate what is evil. Okay? And you are to hate sin. Our own sin. Okay? Our own sins. I hate my sin. When I sin, I hate it more than anything. Okay? I hate my own sin. Do you? I do, yeah, yeah. Okay. Shh, shh. Then why do some of you justify it?
Do you hate your own sin? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. You can hate the sin in other people. Yeah. But what about your own self? See, again, examining yourself. I'm not going to go off on that. Okay. What did Paul hate? Sin. Okay. That's what he hated. Paul hated sin. Now, go back to Romans chapter 12 now. Or go forward, excuse me, to Romans chapter 12. Looking at verse 16. Okay? Looking at verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Okay? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Same mind and in the same judgment. you got to remember, the Corinthian bodies of believers, you know, the Church of the Living God in Corinth, they were allowing sin into their mists. You read 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And there were divisions among them because one was a Paul, one was a Paulus. Okay? There was envying, strife. There was sin there. Okay? And they were allowing sin. And they weren't judging sin. But they were puffed up. It's like, well, we're not judging you. Okay? You have to remember that. And looking at this verse again. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now go back to 1 Peter chapter 4. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 1. In 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 1. Okay? For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. With the same mind. And look at what this is tied into. Okay? We're going to read verse 2 as well. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Okay? To the will of God. Guess what, people? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hates sin. He hates sin. He's not okay with it. Never. Sin is never okay in God's eyes. Never. Never. Okay? You have to remember that. And when it says ceased from sin, okay, here in verse 1, that doesn't mean sinless perfection. My, 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 my people. No, no. How many times are you going to touch a hot pan that's just come out of the oven without a mitt on to realize, oh, maybe I shouldn't touch that, that hot pan. Okay? You touch a hot pan, taking it out of the oven without a mitt on, it's going to burn you. It's going to scar you, right? And what does that verse say? For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Think about these people who all their lives smoked cigarettes or drank booze and killed their body. They get saved, right? And they repent of that evil. Okay? They're scarred from what they had done in their past life. Now, God can heal them, yes. But because of that scarring done to their bodies by either smoking, drinking, drug use, uh, fornication, whatever it is, Okay? You're going to cease from that upon being saved and not go back to it. Or you ought not to. Okay? But the point is, brethren, we are to hate sin. Now go back, uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Okay? For who hath known the mind of the Lord? 
that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. One verse. Philippians chapter 2. I can get there. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 4 under verse 8. Philippians chapter 2, verses 4 under verse 8. Actually, let's read verses 3 under verse 8, okay? Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each, each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Okay? Hence, okay? But with this mind, we, you and I who are saved, we have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, living within us. And the Spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, will guide us into all truth. And he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Brethren, you and I, as the church of the living God, we are to hate sin in ourselves and also in the world. Okay? We are to hate that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. You got it? You got it? And how do we find out which is good? Right here. The scriptures. Okay? The scriptures. Okay? You got that? But now... Go back to uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 19 on to verse 21. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, verse 20 is a direct uh, reference onto Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 onto verse 22. Okay? Now, this is actual, this is in a literal sense. Now, I have to use an example. There is an individual in England who hates me, who, if given the opportunity, would kill me, literally kill me if he had the chance. He's not saved. He's lost. He's a devil. He's going to hell. He is the Lord's enemy. Therefore, he is my enemy. Okay? But if some kind of circumstance were there, if he needed food, I would give him food to eat. If he was thirsty, I would give him water to drink. In the actual, literal sense. Yes. Yes. But I want to suggest to you another thing. Okay? Look at verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 4. One verse. One verse. When Satan was tempting our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Oh. Oh. Really? Yeah. Yeah, don't say, huh? Now, go to Job. Go back to Job, verse 20, uh, chapter 23. Job, chapter 23. 
Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23, verse 12. Ah, let me see. Job chapter 23. Let's read verses 11 and 12. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Romans chapter 12. Therefore, if thine en uh, verse twenty. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. And uh, uh, and remember what else it says <clears throat> in Romans chapter ten, verse seventeen. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hmm. Hmm. You don't say. And go back to Romans chapter 12, verse 20. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 14. John chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 14. When the Lord, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, Remember that. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have would have given thee living water. And note this, note in verse 10, okay? Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, okay? And who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Uh, thou wouldest have asked him. Thou wouldest have asked of him. Excuse me. Asked of him. I'm not saying. It's just saying. And he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoso drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. 
So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Go back to uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Come on, fingers. Romans chapter 12, verse 20 and 21. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, in a literal sense, Yes. Yes. If my, if my enemy were hungry and destitute and needed food and drink, who would kill me in a heartbeat, yeah, I would give him drink. I would give him food. But like I said, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? For us, Church of the Living God. This is how we get our nourishment. Through the scriptures. Our Lord Jesus Christ speaks to us through the scriptures. Okay? Do you get it? How do you love your enemies? Hmm? And again, show me love your enemies within the Pauline epistles. It's not there. But it says in verse 14... Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Hmm. Bless them. So, okay. Does that mean that I'm supposed to, oh, bless you for persecuting me, for sending out information within my locality when you're across the sea trying to uh, bring my name under, or cast dung upon me. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much for your persecution, for your tribulation. Come on, people. No. No. Um, let, me, let me just say this to you. Um, is not salvation a blessing? Think about that. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. If if you don't know where that is, go find it. Okay? Is not salvation a gift? Is not salvation a blessing? Are we not blessed with God our Father, Himself who dwells within us, sealed unto the day of redemption? Is that not a blessing? In comparison to those who are lost, who have not the Spirit, where are they going? They're going to hell. But we who are saved at the Church of the Living God, we're going to get caught up. If we are absent from the body, we are present with the Lord. Is that not a blessing? Verse 14 in Romans chapter 12. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Oh, thank you for the persecution. No. During that persecution, how are you how are you dealing with it? During that persecution, suffering, tribulation, whatever it may be. What does it say there? In verse 9, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. See, during the most difficult times, God can use that, you as his witness, on how you react, behave, handle persecution for your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Peter was talking about. Okay? Go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 4, not Thessalonians, Brad. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 14. 
Let a man so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. For of man's judgment, yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And how does he judge you, dear friends? Through the scriptures. Through self-examination of the scriptures. How are you lining up? <clears throat> Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. Of the hearts, excuse me. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Look at that. Look at that. That ye might learn of in us not to think of men above that which is written. What is written of us? Our time is as a shadow. We are grass that withereth. You're going to die. Okay? You're going to die. I'm going to die. Okay? Do not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Okay? For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Whether it be evil or whether it be good. Okay? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? That's why those who do this, tracting, preaching on the street, witnessing whatever it may be, you got to be really careful to remember who it is who has called you and who it is who feeds you. Is that yourself? Good luck with that, man. Okay? Verse 9. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were, appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. A spectacle. Church of the living God, especially nowadays, you are being watched by all of these lost people. You know, where's this, where's this? Okay, are you conforming to the world? How are you dealing with the tribulations, the persecutions, the sufferings that are coming upon you? How are you dealing with that? Are you walking uprightly according to the scriptures? Were you not following me along when we were in Peter? Hmm? Hmm? How we deal with these things as the church of the living God is a witness and a testimony unto those who are going to be left behind. Do you cave in? Or do you stand upon the scriptures? Which one is it? Hmm? Let's continue. For we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Put in your head these disgusting um, prosperity guys and these fake sissy Christians that are associated with these buildings who preach to you love. Love. Love your enemies. What they mean by that is don't judge people. Don't tell people their sin. Don't show them their sins through the scriptures. They're preaching another Jesus. 
not the Jesus who is of the scriptures, just like those easy believism devils. They're preaching to you another Jesus. Okay? And incidentally, you easy believism heretics, you're the ones who are preaching hate. You are the hate preachers because you're jumping over scriptural repentance, brokenness and contrition, and just going, just believe. You're the ones who are the haters. You are the ones who are preaching hate out there. Not those of us who adhere to the scriptures. Okay? Let's continue. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world. And the world lieth in wickedness right now, of course. Hello? Okay. We are as we uh, we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscurring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Look at that. Look at that. Verse 12. Being reviled, we bless. Salvation is a gift. It's a blessing. How do you, for our instruction in righteousness, shew love unto your enemies? How do you do good to those who hate you? Hmm? You tell them the truth. Through the scriptures. Through the scriptures. Unless you repent of your self-righteousness and get over yourself and stop justifying your devilish behavior and pointing of the finger and causing divisions and strife. Unless you repent, guess what? You're going to hell. And you're going to burn. You're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever to infinity and beyond. You tell someone that out of love for them. You see someone running toward a cliff. The worst thing you can do is like, oh, hey, by the way, you're running toward a cliff. Don't, you better change your direction. Okay? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And remember, again, where does Paul tell us to love our enemies? Okay? But it says, here in verse 12, being reviled, we bless. Bless those who persecute you by telling them the truth, by standing to the scriptures. See? You get it? Okay? Now, Second Corinthians chapter two. Second Corinthians chapter two. Second Corinthians chapter two, verses one under verse eleven. Second Corinthians chapter two, verses one under verse eleven. But I determined this with myself that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad? But the same which is made sorry by me? And I wrote the same unto you, lest when I came I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly to you, unto you. Am I reading the right, the right one unto you? Oops. Okay. Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. 
It was 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Aha, I got that. <laughs> Sorry about that. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Let's, let's continue. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 11. Thank you. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation abound also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Now hold on. Again, how do you as the church of the living God deal with persecution, tribulation, suffering? How you deal with that is a witness unto those, the lost of the world. It is a witness unto them on how you deal with it. Okay? It is a testimony against them. We spit in your face. We try to drag you through the mud. We try to do things against you. In your locality. And how are you dealing with that? Are you standing upon the scriptures? Hmm? Let's continue. Which is, an, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust, that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, Thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Now let's read verse 12. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience. That in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you were. Okay? Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 under verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 under verse 15. Here's our motivation. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Now, hold on. Being persecuted, we bless. Okay? We bless. What, hold your place here. Go to Romans chapter 12 again. Romans chapter 12 again. Romans chapter 12, verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. 
First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse eleven. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, answer them which glory in appearance, and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Your life is not your own. Our Lord will put you, put, uh, put you into something, maybe to give a testimony unto these lost devils. Okay? Keep that in mind. There again. How do you bless... In Romans chapter 12, verse 14, Bless them which persecute you. And he says, Are being reviled, we bless. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And remember, salvation is a blessing. It's a gift. The lesser is blessed of the greater people. Okay? Do you get it? Do you get it? Okay? Okay, and also to go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, we will be reading verses 17 on to verse 27. <clears throat> and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. This, uh, this ruler here, this rich young guy here, he came to him and said, Good master, not son of David. He saw only a man, not the Messiah, the son of David, standing before him. Let's continue. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Look at verse 21. Look at this. Look at this. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him. Loved him. And said unto him, look at what he does. One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. Look at what Jesus did. It says, And Je then Jesus, beholding him, looking at him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, put the finger right on the thing, Okay? And give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And, 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 okay? And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved. For he had great possessions. Our Lord loved this guy. Okay? Loved him, past tense. Okay? And said unto him, One thing thou lackest. And he put his finger right on that one thing. 
put his finger right on that one thing. And when you have the word of God and you're out there, here, the Lord will speak through the scriptures to you, but he will use you as his minister to speak his word unto the lost. Okay? And the Lord through the scriptures will put his finger on that one thing. And all you lost devils, that one thing that you lack, that you don't want to give up. Do you get it? Let's continue. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth them, answereth again, and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished on a measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looking upon them saith, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. See, today, brethren, we adhere to the scriptures. Okay? We adhere to the scriptures. And out there, in our witness, in our testimonies, in the way we handle things, okay, that is our testimony unto the loss. And when you speak unto the lost, okay, when the Lord orchestrates a circumstance, that's why you always have a sword on you, you speak to them through the scriptures and let the word of God do the cutting. Okay? How do you bless those who persecute you? You tell them the truth, the scriptures. One thing you lack. Do you get it? Do you get it why we looked at this? Hmm? Do you get that? Okay. Now go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 27. Today is the 27th, is it not? Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27, verses 1 and verse 6. Okay. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger and not thine own lips. A stone is heavy, and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath, the fool has said in his heart there is no God, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Wrath is cruel. And anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The kisses of an enemy are deceitful. We'll just go back to Second Corinthians now. Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, 
lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power might, may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death, are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Hold your place here. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 12. Finally be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Not Rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrawise, blessing, blessing, by telling them the truth, living according to the scriptures, that they may see and behold how you, as the church of the living God, are dealing with these persecutions and revilings. Okay? Knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Inherit a blessing. Salvation. Okay? Millennial kingdom reign. Okay? For he that will love life and see good, day and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Okay? Go back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay? Picking up at verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. But at the things which are not seen. Excuse me. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Okay? Also now, go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, excuse me, verses 10 on to verse 17. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10, under verse 17. But thou hast known, fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, 
which persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Verse 12, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Are you living godly? According to the scriptures? See, and if you are not, what kind of testimony are you leaving? Do you understand? We bless those who persecute us. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Living godly according to the scriptures. That is how we bless those who persecute us. Those who hate the Lord, we adhere to the scriptures that they may behold how we are walking in accordance to the scriptures. Do you see? Do you see? And making aware to those who are lost their danger. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Okay? Do you get it? Do you get it? And finally go to John 15. John 15. John chapter 15 verses 18 on to verse 17. Have to put this in there. If the world hates you, uh, John 15, verses 18 on verse 27, excuse me. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken out of them, they had they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my Father, because Jesus Christ is the Father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that it that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. They hate us, brethren, because we are of the church of the living God. But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall, shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Now, thus far, what have we seen? Okay? 
In the Sermon on the Mount, before the crucifixion, our Lord says we are to love our enemies, which is in accordance with works, because during the Millennial Kingdom, it's all works, no faith. Okay? You have to remember that. But during this dispensation, how do we bless those who persecute us? How do we uh, not give ourselves uh, over to wrath, but trust on the Lord? Okay? How do we bless those who persecute Excuse me, who persecute us. How do we do that? By adhering to the scriptures. By our testimony in adhering to the scriptures. And any chance that the Lord opens up unto you, always have the scriptures with you. Always have the scriptures with you. That through the scriptures, the Lord through you can rebuke, may reprove, may exhort, may make known unto that lost person their danger. Okay? That's how we are merciful. That is how we today in this dispensation, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Okay? Okay? Do you, do you understand that? Do you understand that? Remember, before the death, burial, and resurrection, they were under the law. And he was offering the kingdom of heaven, the actual kingdom that's in Jerusalem, onto the Jewish people. That is going to be nothing but works. Okay? And during that time, you don't forgive someone, you ain't going to be forgiven. Okay? And during that time, the Lord's enemies... During the time, uh, during the millennial kingdom, they're going to have to deal personally with the Lord. They're going to personally, physically see the Lord and have to deal with Him personally during the millennial kingdom. Okay? Do you get that? Okay. And then again, you got to remember the love that is being preached today by these fakes. Like the easy believism heretics. Don't judge. Don't judge them. Don't inspect their fruit. It's just believe. Brokenness and contrition. Ah. Your life changed? No, 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 no. You can be just like the lost world, but just because you believe, you have your cake and eat it too. That's so, No. No. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. Okay? But now, now this is going to be a two-part video. Okay? This is going to be a two-part video. I'm going to get into the other part of this video um, here in a little bit. Okay? This is going to, uh, this is part one where we're going over here first how we today of the Church of the Living God bless those who persecute us. Bless those who who put us through stuff it's by telling them truth. Okay? By showing them truth. How we are walking in accordance with the scripture. Okay? So, it's going to be it for this video. I'm going to stop this and go on to um, part two. Okay? See you in the very next video. Bye.